I'm Brendan Koop, and super happy to be here on this webinar. Uh, what I'm going to do just at the beginning here for a brief period of time is just give you, try to give you a sense for uh, the catheter and system design uh, uh, factors that go into designing a uh, safe and effective pulse field ablation system for cardiac ablation. And what we're trying to do with when we when we do pulse field ablation is to disturb the cardiac or disturb the membrane of the cardiomyocytes in a non-thermal way, as Dr. Sutton said. said. So to do that, we uh, use a catheter intracardiac um, and impart pulsed electric fields to the cardiac tissue. And that results in a electric field at the cellular level that the cell experiences. And that's uh, shown a little bit sch uh, schematically on the left here. So that electric field results in a uh, charge buildup on, on the cell membrane. And that, uh, that cell membrane, of course, is made up of lipid molecules, like you see off to the right here. Every cell in the body has a lipid bilayer. And the point of using pulsed electric fields is to disturb that lipid bilayer in a non-thermal way. Um, if we can develop a large enough electric field locally at that cell membrane, we can cause pores to develop. We can physically tilt the cells using charge buildup at the cellular membrane. We can damage the lipid molecules. We can oxidize them and uh, cause permeabilization in other ways. And we can damage the ion channels in, uh, in the membrane of the cell particularly important for cardiomyocytes, uh, uh, ion channel damage, as, as that can uh, hurt its function in, in the local area that we're trying to treat. That's obviously the goal to irreversibly do that. Um, and just before we move on, uh, just keeping in mind that at the cellular level, it's the electric field has a direction. So it's not that this membrane is treated everywhere equally. It's, it's really treated most effectively in line with the local, local electric field that the, the cell is experiencing. So the reason we can hope to preferentially treat myocardial cells is really two reasons. It's the size of the cell and the local cardiomyocyte is uh, the largest kid on the block, you might say. It's the largest cell size of the local tissue we're trying to treat. And so that gives us an advantage in that the larger the cell, the larger the charge buildup we can create and the larger, larger the voltage we can get across that membrane. So it really is, it's that simple in terms of the cell size. The other aspect of cardiomyocytes, again, is the ion channel. So, and, and just, in permeabilizing the membrane at all, or just damaging the, my, the ion channels, we can render that cell inoperable, not able to go through its activation cycle. It's not, we've disturbed its homeostasis uh, in a non-thermal way. The, because of these two really key points for cardiomyocytes, uh, the cardiac cell has the lowest threshold of for irreversible electroporation of any of the cells that we're trying to treat. That's this level right here, if you can see, Sometimes you'll see at 400 volts per centimeter, you'll see 500, 300, but it's in that range. It depends on this, the waveform. It depends on the catheter design. Um, but what I'm showing here on the plot here on the left is that these other, other types of tissue in, in the area, whether it's vascular, smooth muscle, endothelial cells, nerve cells, have many multiples of uh, uh, many multiples higher threshold for irreversible electrocreation. So our job as designers is to treat the local tissue with uh, electric fields that are somewhere in this range. That's the goal. We want to be playing in this range here uh, and spare the tissues that we don't want to ablate while ablating the cardiomyocytes that we are trying to ablate. And that, that's an example on the right there of kind of your ideal histology slide there. So, uh, one of the ways to boil down a lot of this complexity is, is to describe pulse field ablation with kind of a classic strength duration curve. And where the y-axis is the amplitude of the pulses or the strength of the pulses and the, the x-axis is the duration of the energy that we're applying. And we wanna be in the upper right. We wanna, we, you know, we want safe or we want effective durable lesions. Obviously we, we want to have uh, to be playing in that space in the upper right. But we also want 
low artifacts. We want both. Uh, we want to have low muscle stimulation, low heating, low uh, blood cell aggregation. We don't. We want to prevent arcing. And in practice, um, it's very difficult to make these two areas intersect. Uh, when we start researching pulse fit ablation, we always use off the shelf catheters that we have at our disposal. And that's one of the things you, you quickly discover is it's very difficult to make these curves intersect. You're either getting a good lesion or you're getting low artifacts, but not both. One of the things to remember is, you know, we can, uh, electroporating cardiomyocytes is actually deceptively straightforward. We can do that with defibrillation pulses, as we know from the literature. Um, and even back in the history of, of EP, back in all the way back to the 80s, uh, people were, were electroporating uh, myocardium with defibrillation pulses. The problem is not that part, it's the low artifact part. So um, it eventually, you know, as we've done our research, and moved on from off the shelf catheters and obviously tuned a lot of what we're doing with pulse fit ablation, you, you are able to create a overlapping area where you get effective durable lesions, but also low artifacts. The, the critical thing to remember is this, this design space is really small. Sometimes I call this uh, threading the needle because it's very difficult to hit this design space, but you can do it. And, and what we've discovered in our research is three the three major pillars of what we do uh, to hit this really tiny design space is catheter design. So prospectively designing specifically for pulse field ablation, uh, waveform design, and then dosing or the workflow that we use to actually do the ablations. Those are the three pillars um, that can allow you to optimize PFA performance. So let's just look at this first one briefly, uh, the catheter design, and why why would it be advantageous to uh, prefer to uh, prospectively design specifically for pulse field ablation? I'm showing you a, a basic um, electromagnetic model. It's just a, a bipolar model of a focal catheter, and just to illustrate a concept here, so. We're trying to get uh, our pulsed electric field. Uh, we want to make sure that the um, the white line I'm showing here, which is approximately four to 500 volts per centimeter, that's what I referenced is around the area of irreversible electroporation threshold for cardiomyocytes. We want to get that out to a depth of four to five millimeters, which is what you would expect as an electrophysiologist to treat most arrhythmias in the atria. And so we want to get that, that uh, uh, field line out that far. Um, and what you don't realize is in order to do that, uh, very close to the electrodes, we have a very high field. You can see on the scale there, uh, close to these electrodes in this simulation, we're over 4,000 volts per centimeter, so an order of magnitude higher. Um, so that is... Uh, very high field, and it's one of the reasons that uh, we do see some transient effects in other tissues. And um, it's one of the things that we keep a close eye on as designers. So the way we can uh, help make the situation better is to ch change the spacing of electrodes, change the surface area of the electrodes. Uh, these are the things that we try to design for to minimize these effects. And uh, the other aspect is that when we're looking at close to the electrodes, we keep a very close eye on the edges, how close the edges are to each other, um, how much uh, the edge is exposed to the environment, you know, are there corners of, you know, what's the length of the edges? These are where the, the current density is the highest. And most of the bad things or the things we're trying to avoid start at these edges. So heating, uh, arcing, red blood cell aggregation, um, things like that we're trying to avoid. And again, with purposeful design, we can minimize some of these effects by playing with the space and the electrodes in the surface area um, and uh, building that into the design from the beginning. So the way that was done with Fairwave was with extensive preclinical studies during the design, a lot of preclinical studies computational modeling, rapid iteration on the, on the catheter design, uh, both within Boston Scientific. And then once we brought in Ferropulse, uh, we researched many, many different catheter designs, including a, a lasso type 
design uh, with the difficulty that, that there being just that the tissue apposition is difficult with that type of form factor to be consistent. And it's hard to connect kind of crescent uh, shaped lesion zones. But once we move to the basket form factor, which is a kind of ideal for PVI, you know, there's eight splines, 10 splines, six splines. There was a, there was a version that had a balloon in it. It eventually ended up with the, the design that you see on the right, the Fairwave catheter. And that catheter has everything about it specifically um, chosen for pulse field ablation. It has five splines so that we properly space out the electric field and we're able to form this flower form factor, which is a useful form factor uh, in addition to the basket. Uh, this electrode size, spacing, the number of the electrodes um, are all specifically chosen to optimize and hit that very tiny design space. And then another uh, uh, aspect is the, these different size catheters. You would think we would reuse the electrodes on the 31 millimeter and the 35 millimeter, but they're actually different between those two form factors. The electrode size and spacing is optimized differently for those different sizes so that you get a consistent electric field. So those are some of that just gives you a flavor for some of the things that go into uh, PFA uh, des uh, system design uh, for safe and effective PFA. Um, the last thing I'll leave you with is that at the local cellular level, again, the, the electric field has a direction. And so it'd be very useful to change the direction of the electric field so that you're not just treating part of each cell, you're treating more of the totality of the surface of the cell. And that's something we do with the Fairwave catheter. Uh, it has the, this basket and this flower form factor and that allows us to change the direction of the electric field. So you're treating in basket and you have a field that's going from spline to spline kind of in a circumferential way. And the local cell um, is, sees its membrane charged in that direction and poration happening there. And then as we change the direction, we're getting almost an orthogonal change in the electric field so that we're treating the cell at that uh, in a different direction and a little bit more effective. Not strictly necessary, like for thin tissues like the posterior wall and things like that, but it is something that we keep in mind and try to um, do to optimize PFA. So with all that, I'm gonna actually just uh, briefly comment on waveform and then I'm gonna uh, hand it over to Dr. Carruth. So the waveform is really um, not well understood outside of industry for various for very good reasons. Obviously, most waveforms are not publicly disclosed. But one of the things to keep in mind is um, very short pulses and proper spacing and grouping of pulses are what gets us out of a lot of the artifacts we're trying to avoid. It's not necessarily that we're increasing our efficacy. Uh, it's that we're being more efficient and we're actually eliminating the things, the 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 negative effects that we're trying to avoid. And I think Ferripulse, uh, when, when that research was first going on, did that quite effectively.